This video is brought to you by Nebula. Today, more Latin American countries retaliate against Ecuador for its embassy raid. Police attempt to shut down a right-wing conference in Brussels, and Dubai is hit with more than a year's worth of rain in one day. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Wednesday the 17th of April 2024. On Tuesday, two Latin American nations, Venezuela and Honduras, announced punitive diplomatic actions against Ecuador in response to the raiding of the Mexican embassy by Ecuadorian police earlier this month. Specifically, Venezuela announced that it was cutting diplomatic ties with Ecuador and closing the Venezuelan embassy in Ecuador. Meanwhile, the government of Honduras announced that it was recalling its diplomatic envoy from Ecuador. For context, this is part of a wider regional backlash against the actions of the Ecuadorian government. Back on April the 5th, Ecuadorian police raided the Mexican embassy in Quito to arrest Ecuador's former vice president, Jorge Glass, a convicted criminal and fugitive who'd been living there since December. This sparked international condemnation for what was described as a violation of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, which hold that diplomatic premises like embassies are meant to be inviolable territories of the nation in question. As such, Mexico's president described it as a despicable authoritarian raid. In response to the raid, Mexico, whose leftist president has previously clashed with his centre-right Ecuadorian counterpart, cut off diplomatic relations with Ecuador immediately, called for Ecuador's suspension from the United Nations, and also brought the case to the International Court of Justice. Similarly, Nicaragua also broke off diplomatic relations, and has now been joined by Venezuela in doing so. The Venezuelan government said it would only reverse its decision once international law is expressly restored in Ecuador. Ecuador's president, Daniel Noboa, also drew further criticism after he did not appear at a virtual summit of CELAC, the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, where the raid was on the agenda. Noboa previously defended the raid, saying, I've made exceptional decisions to protect national security, the rule of law, and the dignity of people who reject any type of impunity for criminals, delinquents, corrupt people, or narco-terrorists. This isn't even the only recent embassy-related story coming out of Latin America. Last month, it was reported that former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro had spent two nights in the Hungarian embassy in Brasilia, shortly after a number of his former aides were arrested. Meanwhile, Panama's former president, Ricardo Martinelli, remains holed up in the Nicaraguan embassy in Panama City, seeking asylum following convictions for money laundering and embezzlement. There's more on the way, but remember to subscribe and ring the bell for more daily briefing tomorrow. Plus, if you want to support the channel like Jed Ward, then consider joining the new TLDR membership program for just $1.99. A right-wing conference in Brussels featuring the likes of Viktor Orban and Nigel Farage has become the centre of a row after police attempted to shut it down on Tuesday. The two-day National Conservatism Conference was underway at the Claridge venue in the Belgian capital when police arrived on the order of the district's mayor to shut it down for public security reasons. After a lot of back and forth, an agreement was eventually reached yesterday to allow the conference to continue for the rest of the day. But police would not allow any new arrivals into the venue, or let anyone back in who'd previously left. Attendees and organisers from Europe's right and far right were outraged at what they called a suppression of free speech, and naturally used the attempted shutdown to rail against cancel culture. It wasn't just those involved that condemned the actions of the police and mayor, though. Belgium's Prime Minister, Alexander de Croo, said, Banning political meetings is unconstitutional. Full stop and a late-night court ruling paved the way for the event to continue for its scheduled second day today, with the court saying that the risk of disturbance to public order was not sufficient to justify a ban. The venue had already been changed twice in the face of protests against the event and its attendees. In other news, parts of the Middle East have been battered by a fierce rainstorm, killing at least 18 people in Oman and disrupting travel at Dubai Airport one of the world's busiest international airports. From Monday to Tuesday, Dubai was hit by more than 142 millimetres. That's more than a year and a half's worth of rain. Schools were shut across the United Arab Emirates, roadways and homes were flooded, and the airport temporarily diverted inbound flights, as video footage showed jets on flooded tarmac. Meanwhile, flash floods killed at least 18 people in neighbouring Oman. 
The usually arid region is not known for getting a huge amount of rain, but incidents of heavy rain and subsequent flooding have become increasingly regular in recent years, a pattern seen around the world as climate change brings more frequent and more intense extreme weather events. Unseasonal heavy rainfall and floods also hit Pakistan and Afghanistan, leaving more than 100 people dead, according to authorities. A UN statement said the UN and its partners are assessing the impact and related needs and providing assistance. Today, some 3.7 million Croatians cast their votes in a parliamentary election that will test the popularity of their current Prime Minister, Andrej Plenković, and his ruling Conservative HDZ party. Plenković called for early elections in March in response to growing dissatisfaction and protests over many of HDZ's policies, their graft scandals, and what the opposition have described as Plenković's Orban-style erosion of media freedoms. If you want to find out more, we did a video on this last month on TLDR EU, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. The left-wing opposition leader and political arch-nemesis of Plenković, President Zoran Milanovic, has shaken up the elections in what would have definitely been an HDZ victory. Consistently rated as the most popular politician, Milanovic decided to run against Plenković as the leader of the Social Democratic Party, even though he's not technically allowed to do so as Croatia's incumbent president. The standoff between the two leaders has been dubbed as a battle of King Kong versus Godzilla. The most recent polls by Ipsos see HDZ taking 60 seats in the 151-seat parliament, more than any other party, but not enough to take an outright majority. Therefore, coalition talks are expected to follow the vote. A possible Social Democrat-led coalition led by Milanovic has stoked fears in Brussels, as it could change the country's stance on major issues such as support for Ukraine in its war with Russia, as Milanovic opposes help for Ukraine. Also, if Plenković fails, the centre-right European People's Party stand to lose an ally and a vote among leaders who back the re-election of European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. The exit polls are expected minutes before voting closes at 7pm tonight, and official results are expected in the following days. We'll keep you updated on the results. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss a particularly distinguished wombat. Now, the average lifespan of a wombat is estimated to be around 20 years. However, it's understood that a wombat called Wayne, or sometimes Mr. Wine, is going to turn 35 this month, making him the oldest wombat in the world. Previously, a wombat called Carver lived to 33, and a wombat called Patrick lived to 31. In Patrick's case, a permanent memorial was built in Ballarat Wildlife Park, where he was based to honour him. Perhaps Wayne will be bestowed with the same honour. That's not the end of this story either, so if you want to dive deeper into this and other stories, we have an exciting announcement. That's because it was revealed, in variety no less, that we're building a new product with our partners at Nebula, called Nebula News. Let me explain this exciting announcement. In an increasingly polarised and confusing world, it's hard to find news that matters and that you can trust. So every day, the TLDR team curates a selection of videos that matter most in the world right now, handpicking a feed of content which should keep you up to date with everything you need. That means no more overwhelming feeds of news coverage, and instead just the stories that matter most. Videos produced by the brilliant creators on Nebula and curated by the TLDR team. It's truly the easiest way for you to keep on top of the news that matters to impress at your next wedding, dinner party, or whatever your life entails. It's not just curated news content brought to you directly by us. Nebula also features exclusive original content. That's things like Real Life Law's brand new series War Room, which every month runs you through a whole load of ongoing conflicts, keeping you in the loop. You can also watch every TLDR video on Nebula ad-free, and in many instances, before they land on YouTube. Now, if you're already subscribed to Nebula, you can find the brand new Nebula news section at nebula.tv forward slash news, and be sure to bookmark or save that link so you can use it as your TLDRified news homepage. If you're not a member already, then click the link in the description to sign up now. If you do, you'll get 40% off an annual plan by using our link. That's less than £2 a month. Plus, Nebula will know that you came from us, which really helps us out. Thanks for your support, especially when we're doing something so big and new. And we hope you love Nebula News.